Since I did my comprehensive series on wood turning at chess set last year, my eight-year-old granddaughter's gotten into chess and has actually won a trophy. I was as thrilled as she was. Since then, her five-year-old sister is showing an interest, so of course I've got to make an heirloom set for her. So that's what this project's going to be about. We're going to be using persimmon from, for spindle blanks cut a year ago for the dark pieces and Bradford pear for the light pieces. And we're going to dark, we're going to dye the dark pieces green. I have notches cut in this hand screw. I've marked the center on these before I put them in here. And so on through all the pieces, for in this case the, the pawns. So we're going to start with turning a pawn like this. And we're going to use a mandrel that fits in a scroll chuck. Uh, I've got this step that, that's exactly three quarters that matches the three quarters inch hole I drilled. And I've got this ring as kind of a bushing. This is 25 millimeter, this is 30 millimeter, and that gives me some better idea for trying to evaluate exactly whether I have this thing round or not. Now I'm just going to screw this in the bottom and mount this screw chuck into my 50 millimeter jaws. Like that. For these pawns, they're so short, I don't need to worry about the tailstock support. I'm going to turn it very high speed and I'm going to rough this round. Easy light cuts. Turns out that 5 8 inch matches that ball head so I'm just going to turn this down. Now I'm going to do the diameter of the ball. I'll go ahead and do a V-cut. Now all I gotta do is turn this little cylinder. Rather the sphere, it's going to be the head. Now for the collar, I know I've, I've turned enough of these, so I've got a feel for that. I find it easier just turn the ball five eighths, and then step down to the, the collar of the pawn. Now using the spindle gouge, I'm going to with with the bevel. This is the bevel at 90 degrees to the wood, I'm going to pick it up on that line and then I'm going to do half a cove going into the bottom of this collar. So I'm anchoring it with my, with my thumb and just scoop it like ice cream. Just scoop it. And using my point tool, I'm just going to come in and by eye, I'm just going to go halfway in between this shoulder and the bottom. Okay, it helps me uh, when I'm going to do several of these, go ahead and get my calipers out for the key dimensions and have those set and also have my storyboard uh, handy uh, that I'll be using to transfer those critical dimensions. It also pays for me to have the, the tools handy that I'm going to be using for this particular project and not have any extraneous tools around that'll just uh, di distract me or so they don't have to go looking for a tool. Now that i got all the pawns done, let's do some rooks. Okay, let's check the critical dimension of the 30 millimeter, and I'm just about there. All I got to do is square it up. I use my storyboard to mark that dimension there.
perfect skew to just bring this around. Go in there and hit that line just a little bit. Hit that line a little bit. Hit that line a little bit. That's a lot easier than having to drill and hollow a square, uh, a square scraper. Now all I got to do is mark for the crenellations. I'm going to use the chuck jaws to kind of get this square so I've got the uh, slot going straight up and down. I'm going to lay this straight edge here and come, come across the middle and then turn it 90 degrees and I think this will this will be close enough use a tiny little file to start these uh, these crenellations mark it square these don't have to be perfect that's part of the beauty of a handcrafted set is just a little bit of difference from piece to piece They're kind of a coarse almost a rasp and I've got to be careful to keep it in a groove, so I'm going to go very easy. Come around. Okay. Part of the finishing process on the lathe, I want to put a coat of uh, lacquer sanding sealer on here. And that just helps fill the pores, shows me, shows me whether I missed anything on sanding. And it dries very, very fast. Only takes uh, maybe 30 seconds or so. Give the sanding sealer just a moment to dry. Then I'm going to come back with some uh, 500 grit. Just do a little fine tuning sanding here. Very nice. And I'll do the final, final buffing on a buffing wheel with the uh, carnauba wax. Time to do the bishop. Uh, I could probably do this without tailstock support, but I like to use it. Notice there's no point here to damage the very top of the the bishop, which has a, I think, a, just a beautiful, ele beautifully elegant design. This tiny little uh, feature at the top, uh, so it won't damage that. So, okay. Again, I have a storyboard. I try to avoid measurements if I can find some relative reference, such as this beading tool for the bottom. Got to brace it. Come in here and just scoop in. And we'll just tape this down, and we know we got to get these calipers to measure 18, 18. It's just about there. They're both a little large. Okay, here we go. We're starting with the storyboard with Queen. Uh, Queen's similar to the others, except for the little additional finial uh, that gets added. And it's got a little larger base than some of the smaller men, so we've got to make sure to, to adjust our caliper for the base. I mentioned.
fix that up in the middle a little bit. Okay, now we got a nice smooth surface. And we're going to use an eighth inch hand drill. And we may need to just ride it just a bit. All we got to do is do a little, little sanding and we'll be done. Completed queen. Fast way to prepare something small down is peel and cut with a skew. Okay, now we're getting started on the kings. Because they're a little bit longer, we're going to go ahead and bring up a little bit of tailstock support since we've got to drill a hole anyway. This will help us identify where to drill the hole and keep the bit from wandering so it does a couple of, couple of positive things. Now we're getting into a little more of the detail. Similar to the other, we have a little cove here and then a little bit of a collar. Now we're going to waste this this taper. The right hand code. So we take our beading tool, or rather our point tool, and we just eyeball it halfway in between and put that little decorative line in it. Now that I've already got a nice uh, place to, for the drill bit to keep it from wandering, I'm not going to have to get a skew or anything, we'll just turn the speed down a little bit and go ahead and do this. Okay, we're going to dye this green, but uh, uh, no, actually this is the, uh, we're not going to dye this green, this is the bread for pear, but we're going to put this little stem in there like that, uh, so that gives some idea what it looks like. So now we've got the hole drilled. We're in good shape. Okay, to finish the brad for pair pieces, I'm putting on a little sanding, lacquer sanding sealer. Uh, I've sanded it up to uh, 320. And I put this sanding sealer on that, it dries very quick. Then I'll sand it back with uh, maybe some 400 grit and on to 500 grit. Okay, by the time I get back with a piece of sandpaper, this is going to be dry. So let's go ahead and just knock it down a little bit. Notice how I come over the edge. You want to keep crisp edges on all the details. I want to show you the approach I'm using to finishing the dyed uh, products. Because of the, I'm using an alcohol-based dye, it, dyed, uh, it dried fairly quickly. But to finish it, I want these things to be shiny with a durable finish. And to kind of seat that dye, which is not something you want to get on your hands, you really would need to put a protective coat. So I'm, I'm using the simplest one, and that's shellac, and I'm just putting it on on the lathe. And because I'm using this mandrel, uh, it makes it very easy to kind of spin it on, set the bottle aside, let it run for just a second. But meanwhile, I've got another uh, uh, chuck ready to go for the next one. So I'm going to turn this thing off, grab the chuck, set this one aside. While it's drying, I can go ahead and deal with another one. And this one's tight enough, I don't even need to use the screw. I can just pop it on there and easily enough put on this 
shellac coat and because of the alcohol base in shellac it kind of uh, it, it makes the dye run just a little bit maybe but that's okay because it just blends in the color a little bit better in with the grain of this wood and I think it's, it's, it's got a, mu a much better color than it had before I'm just gonna let that one turn just a little bit for it to dry a bit I'm gonna let these dry overnight then I'm gonna come back and uh, uh, put on lacquer a couple of lacquer coats tomorrow